introducing the brain deadlift. Now I know what you're going to say. Where can we get as much? That is some next level t-shirt design. Naturally strong, not a roid, taking phony. I'm not the biggest fan of energy drinks, energy drink culture, or stimulated comedy. You may have noticed, unless it's an epic collaboration of dry scooping proportions. Collaborating with Larry's medicine cupboard, I think. Haters will say it's fake weights. Bum first, into the hole. <laughs> and so that is Stefania Totolo, who is a funny skits creator in partnership with Larry Will's assistant turned trendsetter. Is that funny? Well, apparently so. But look, each to their own. If you find this new generation of slapstick gym comedy funny, you're wrong. Me and my dumbbell. Couldn't agree more. The new Natty or Not test is if you can squat Larry Wills or not. Whereas I energy drinks. Two litres or energy drink chugged in seconds. Happy New Year. Not the way to become an internet sensation. This is... Kim Kardashian said she'd eat poop daily if it made her look younger. She should try my cooking. <laughs> That is a weird street fighter. Not sure about being spanked by a log as the first exercise. That's only for the weekends. But it's a basic pulley system using a log which gives external resistance through different movements. Games! So the question is basically a single word. Uh... Turkesterone? I took natural steroids for the past 90 days and I feel bigger than ever. I got bigger, stronger, and leaner. This supplement is known as Turkesterone. And over time, I increased my bench press, my squat, my overhead press, and so much more benefit for me. So I no longer feel small because I took natty roids for 90 days and this happened. A 10% discount code? I'm still 100% natural taking testosterone. I do not promote the use of PD or any unnatural substances. Stay natty. Completely agree. This video is for educational purposes only. Completely disagree. These come across to me as adverts. Very well put together adverts. The TikTok one with the music and the fast editing was excellently done. Got bigger, stronger, and leaner. But it was a promotional advert. And so we have different ideas of educational. I would place meta-analysis as educational. I would place published research as a contribution to our education. Anecdotal experience where many variables could be affecting the results has to be considered as weaker information. And so here's an example of why this anecdotal information seems impressive, but in reality is weak. I just felt the tachesterone in my body. Something about my muscles feels very tight. I can contract my muscles so much better. My muscles feel way tighter underneath my skin. It's really weird. It sounds like I have a pump, but it's like different than a pump. It's all this type of positive projection that in reality just doesn't mean anything. There's no accurate scientific explanation or mechanism that's being explained there, but it all adds to the positive promotional feel around this journey that he's putting us through. This is the guy that also sold BCAA glutamine, two of the worst supplements ever in one overpriced package. BCAA, I've talked about a few times on this channel, glutamine, which has poor bioavailability for recovery. The selling of that supplement is a straight cash grab. Here is the balanced truth for you. And so Jesse does show a measurable outcome from his three months, which is, for example, an increase in his strength in his overhead press. Now, could that have been a result of taking tochesterone? Well, it's possible, yes. Or could that have just been the fact that the guy trained his ass off for three months? Well, absolutely. Yes, that's possible. Could it be numerous other variables? Well, absolutely. The point to remember is there's absolutely no way to clearly deduce that his increased strength gains, for example, were due to testosterone. We cannot claim direct causation because we simply do not have human research to fully understand how this supplement works in the human body in response to resistance training. And that's the absolute truth. There's just simply no human evidence that we can look at to say, oh yeah, I, I totally can predict what this does. And so I've clipped parts together so you get the main points because it's very long, but of course you can go and listen to the original. Generally, that's the way it goes. Like there's some cell culture stuff, maybe there's some rodent stuff. And then uh, you have the first human trial with some promising results. And then then the hype train leaves the station. With, with Turkesterone, maybe there's a human trial somewhere. I couldn't f***ing find it. You know, hey, maybe it does do all sorts of cool things, but, but we just don't have the human trials necessary to say with any degree of confidence, like, 
oh, safe bet, this is a really effective ergogenic aid. And that is the key point. So does that mean that we should completely dismiss this anecdotal information from several people saying they had good results on Turk? Well, no, that's not fair either, but it has to translate into high quality academic studies for many reasons, but also to understand any potential side effects. And due to the hype around Turk, the placebo effect is not out of the question either. Burden on somebody selling a supplement or trying to make a compelling argument in favor for it, you gotta show me that it's reliably dosed, you gotta show me that it's safe, that it's bioavailable, and that it gets to the target tissue in vivo in human being. You gotta show me that it induces clinically relevant or practically relevant effects. And you got to show me that all this stuff is occurring in a fairly generalizable population. And as I've said before, when a supplement has absolutely no published human research in a controlled environment, be careful with your hopes and expectations. I'm concerned about this trend. And overall, I'm concerned about this growing importance that we're placing on supplementation as a key part of a fitness and health journey. Whatever just happened to listening to Rocky music and lifting weights. And I know I've shown this guy a lot recently, but it came up on my feed and he talks about the very same video. Let's be very clear here. Tricesterone is currently back by precisely zero human research. It has no confirmed mechanism of action. User feedback is mixed and anecdotal reports are extremely unreliable anyway. And calling it a natural steroid is nothing more than bullshit marketing lingo that goofball influencers use to draw in clicks and earn affiliate commissions off their young gullible audience. That is what's called saying what you think. Hashtag savage. The before and after hustle. Marvin is not happy. Marvin is coming out swinging, stating that he's never taken roids or even supplements, pre-workout, etc. Except the supplements he sells. Do none of you review anything you say ever? Here's my physique. Never taken a supplement. Buy my supplement. Sorry, back up. Why are people mad at Marvin? 400,000 followers accusing him of deception. Well, because of this post where he claims a three-month recomposition, I'm trying not to laugh, whilst also selling a program in the post. If you're serious and ready to transform your body and lifestyle, click the link on my bio. No. And so people are commenting roids, etc. The deception here is that that is the same physique on the left and right. The stomach bloated and pushed out on the left, maybe even some extra sodium consumption to retain water, different lighting and angles. The pic on the right is with professional level lighting. That picture on the left has that washed out I'm rubbish at taking pictures on my phone lighting. A slightly different body angle, which makes a huge difference. Hugely different postures, pelvic tilt anyone. Flexing on the right, triceps for days, son. A huge difference in presentation between both pictures, which in my opinion is misleading and you guys need to be kicked out the back door of the fitness industry because you sell services based on this, which will hook in beginners who don't know better and are just trying to develop themselves or what I call the beginner trap. They will see a three month transformation and want to look like that also and pay you for the privilege. I mean, you can even see his abs in the left picture. The outline of them is visible if you stare at it with goggles like I did. We've all seen these pictures in magazines, on the internet, everywhere. People going Do you doubt your ability to change in 90 days? It's okay to doubt because you don't quite understand how it works, and I do, of course. Brian Murdoch, I go gym. Good sense of humor. People like him for his personality. And the dude is built, except for one small issue. Omar approves, and so he's constantly roasting his own calves. And humor aside, genetics play a huge role in hypertrophy potential and aesthetics. That's just the way it is. Your muscular development for certain muscle groups and overall is in part down to genetics, your parents and all that sort of stuff. It isn't a fair roll of the dice for everyone. An example is Arnold's son, you know, the other one, those Hercules genetics, natural muscle mania, overall champion, TikTok comedian Kwame approves. And so talking of genetics, I just came across James Smith PT. It's not too late to get that six pack for the summer. Just make sure you're spending seven minutes. Not only is this guy kind of annoying. Two sets of 30 seconds of sit up twists. I want to bring something to your attention. Something called the swimmer's body illusion. Imagine someone, if you will, that wants to get in shape. They think the bodybuilders look too swollen and stupid and they think runners look too skinny and miserable. They go, oh, swimmers, they've got amazing physiques. I'll start swimming. Three, four, five months in, they realize they don't look like a swimmer. They're like, what the f is up? They then come to realize that swimmers don't look the way they do because they swim. They swim because of the way they look. People think I'm big and broad because I played rugby. No, I played rugby because I was big and broad. So when we see people in shape like this, I'm sure he works very hard, but genetically spread across populations are some people that are just gonna build muscle quite easily and remain relatively lean with minimal effort. It's important to keep that in mind whenever you see some in baby oil, online tensors muscles and telling you to do ab workouts. And so please let me know what you think about this speech, which to be fair was pretty hilarious. And so there are a variety of genetic factors we can look to when we want to assess muscle growth potential naturally. Muscle tissue composition, hormonal factors, but also your bones. And in terms of calculating your muscle growth potential, we can look to the muscle to bone ratio. And so this ratio expresses the idea that the amount of muscle you can grow is limited by the amount of bone mass that you have. And the good thing about this method is it takes into account how wide you are, how stocky if you like, and not 
just height as a fat-free mass index does. And here we have a quote from the sports gene where a kilogram of bone supports five kilograms of muscle and four in women. And so you have to think genetically that your muscle growth potential is connected to your bone mass. I showed this before where Knuckles explains the connection. They arise from the same stem cell line. They grow and strengthen in response to similar hormonal signals in puberty and muscle contraction strengthen bone. We know that resistance training isn't just about your muscles. It's about your bones and your joints and all that good stuff. Problem with the muscle to bone ratio is it's very hard to measure realistically people aren't going to be able to measure it themselves. But just as a takeaway point, in essence, your frame determines your muscle building potential. That is common sense, you know, wide and stocky, for example. But for anyone wanting a clear measurement, you can go to the Casey Butts Maximum Muscular Potential Model, perhaps not as good as the bone to muscle ratio, but this one is easier to calculate, more user-friendly. And you can find this calculator online and put in your numbers and find out your results finished.